while also having a gas engine for those longer trips. Visit the brand new Finley Volvo Cars Las Vegas, located in the southwest at Rainbow in the 215 and online at FinleyVolvo.com. Stay up to date on the Raiders, the Golden Knights, and UNLV Athletics on the Press Box with Ed Grady and Tyler Bischoff. Weekday mornings at 7 on ESPN Las Vegas, 1100 AM and 100.9 FM. Sports Center All Night continues with Jay Reynolds. Sports Center All Night presented by Progressive Insurance. There is a big question mark hanging over the Cleveland Browns as we head toward the upcoming season. And Deshaun Watson's disciplinary hearing scheduled to begin on Tuesday. Of course, accused of harassing, assaulting, or touching 26 women during massage appointments when he was with the Houston Texans. ESPN's Jeremy Fowler. With independent officer Sue L. Robinson hearing this case on Tuesday, as our Adam Schefter reported, that signifies that the league has done its investigation pretty much in full. I was told that they've been at this for about 18 months. They feel very good about where things stand. They've done several interviews with some of the plaintiffs. They've talked to Watson. They could still follow up and do some background work, but this is pretty much ready to go. And so uh, you know, the, the appointed officer is a new process. Usually Roger Goodell would handle discipline. Now it's a based on somebody jointly appointed here by the NFL and the NFLPA. So she could take you know, a couple weeks, she could come to a decision pretty soon. Uh, the league felt all along this would be wrapped up before training camp, and it is trending that way. Now, the NFLPA is involved here. They're thinking, hey, if this is going to be a lengthy suspension, they're likely to appeal that process on behalf of the player. So as Jeremy pointed out, the NFL expecting to push for a lengthy suspension for Watson. The union defends the quarterback in this process. Sue Robinson has no track record of ruling on cases involving NFL players. One source says her decision could come within a week, but it could take until training camp as well. As Jeremy mentioned, the league hoping for clarity sooner rather than later, sooner being hopefully before training camp begins in late July. Sports Center All Night, ESPN Radio, back to baseball in Anaheim. Mariners and Shall we say less than angelic angels? Here's the delivery and hit by the pitch is Winker. And now we'll see if the umpires do anything because warnings were already. Now Winker is heading to the Angels dugout and both benches empty. And here come all the relievers from the bullpen. And we have a brawl right now over by the Angels on deck circle. Punches being thrown everywhere. This is an all-out brawl over on the left side of home plate. Here come all the relievers. Umpires trying to restrain players. And the war is on right now. This is far from being broken up. Now more players involved because all the members of the respective bullpens are down there. Players are on the ground. A lot of grappling going on right now by the Angels on deck circle. So many times when dugouts empty, it's just a little pushing and getting together and chatting. Not here. Jesse Winker coming back on the field a couple of times during the melee. Took a while to break things up and all the game would be delayed 18 minutes. Now, if we rewind, Saturday night there was a fastball that got pretty close to the head of Mike Trout. Sunday, the Angels made a late decision to go with rarely used reliever Andrew Wants as their opener on the mound. First inning, he throws a pitch behind the head of Julio Rodriguez and then hits Winker in the hip to start the second. And that's when things exploded. Angels manager Phil Nevin. No, I mean, look, you play eight eight games in a matter of a week against the same team um, you know things like this happen I mean the scheduling um, you know I, you know tensions just you know that's, that's baseball sometimes unfortunately there's some ugly incidences once in a while and and I think that's just what happened today in total eight ejections six players and both managers including Seattle skipper Scott Service certainly you know a lot of stuff uh, uh, that probably shouldn't happen uh, in the game, you know, happened out there today, motions running high, but uh, it's pretty clear what, what was going on. Uh, you know, they, they, they switched, put an opener in there to, to throw some balls at us and, you know, uh, got out of hand from there and, and kind of a, uh, a black eye on, on you know, uh, 
been a very good series, competitive series, you know, whatever. Uh, and it kind of got crazy there in the second inning. But you know, I've often said that people show you who they are, believe them. And, and I'll leave it at that. Lengthy delay in the game. Winker was one of the eight ejections in the game, and he, shall we say, waved goodbye as he left. Winker just looked to the crowd, and he, he is flashing a finger to the Angels crowd on the first base side. That is absolutely classless. Now he's doing it with both hands to the crowd. That is as Bush League as it gets right there. His suspension should be more than a game or two. Yeah. That was classless right there. Things were restored. Angels want to win the game. 2-1 to one. Mariners' five-game win streak comes to an end. Marlins and Mets also win a one-run game. A one-run game at the end. 0-1 oh, to Fortes. He's hit well. Deep to left. Way back. Nick Fortes has walked it off for the Marlins. The rookie catcher, Fortes, with his first big league walk-off homer. It's his third of the season, and the Marlins stun the Mets 3-2. to two. W-I-N-Z, Fortes, walk-off homer in the ninth. His first career walk-off hit. Well, there are two sides to every feel-good story, right? Atlanta, Dodgers, that's next at ESPN Radio. Greeny with Mike Greenberg.